Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I want to talk a little bit about the new Incline Wall feature, which I just recently added. So in order to show that uh, feature, I had to kind of create this little model here just to kind of get things going. Um, it just didn't want to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, generating all this, and that would take up way too much time for the video. So I went ahead and kind of set this up initially so we have something to work with. So as you can see also I'm using uh, the 2017 SketchUp Make and the reason why I'm doing that is just to show you that you know we're still backward compatible back that far and yes I do have uh, SketchUp Pro 2023 and the latest and greatest version also works with all the plugins but um, yeah I'm just going to use the old quite uh, uh, dated now 2017 just to show how to do all this so to get going here I uh, initially just created you know this little garage I think it's a 24 by 32 um, and then I threw an attic set on top of it as you can tell and then what I'm gonna obviously show you is how to create these dormer walls that are inclined walls that are sitting on top of these attic trusses and so basically I've just taken and modified this attic set manually. I've deleted a couple trusses. As you can see over here, I've deleted another two. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you step by step how to create this um, <clears throat> uh, kind of, I guess, dormer uh, wall set for the other bay here. So in order to do that, you know, we basically had to create like a little floor piece here. And as you can see, you're going to probably ladder frame that out, something like that. And then, uh, you know, extend. I've, and I've got this offset from the outside wall one foot in. I mean, you could set that whatever you want. It's, you know, it's literally a, a design choice more so than anything else. But uh, in this case, I have it set one foot back. Okay. So the way I get going on something like this is I will kind of set this up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this little outline here. Uh, so I'll just use this... Uh, rectangular tool to create a little little uh, plan here so we have something to work off of and I'll just stretch it out over right to this corner okay so you can see we've got like a little <clears throat> rectangle here so because the walls are going to be resting on the roof itself I am going to offset these uh, lines out by five and a half inches because I'm going to go with a five, uh, five and a half inch wall so I just go the move tool and I just go ahead and push this out 5.5 and then I'm going to do the same thing over here with this edge if I can get a hold of it. Uh, let's see, I go back to my select tool. Okay, and then we're going to just move that out five and a half inches that way and it did that automatically. And then I set a little guideline here so I could push this back. And the reason why I'm pushing this back to that line is because I need to get the length of this wall so it extends past uh, where it intersects the roof plane. So that's basically the only reason for that. So again, we'll just take this and we'll go ahead and move it straight back to this line here. Okay. So, and I've actually set the units up from architectural to digital or decimal, sorry. Uh, the reason for that is just so I can accurately measure things right, you know, to the eighth decimal place. You don't have to do that, but I just did. So you can see this is like nine and a half inch or nine and a half feet, sorry, or 114 inches. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the next thing is we just want to go ahead and create the walls. I'm going to go with the same wall height as this. I think this wall height was, let's edit that wall real quick and we can take a look. Yeah, it's it's just seven feet tall. It's not a full uh, eight foot wall. So we're just go a little shorter just because this roof itself is not that tall. So we'll just go ahead and wrap uh, three walls here. So we'll go ahead and click our draw wall tool, set ourselves up with a wall height of 84 inches. And just update on that. And then just start at this corner. This will work for intents and purposes. And just go right to that corner and then to this corner. Basically we're just setting the wall down on top of this uh, attic floor, right? Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is that <clears throat> if you look at the corners of this uh, this front wall here and you compare them to this one, 
you'll notice that it's different. And so it automatically defaulted to this uh, front wall having outside corners instead of what are called inset outside corners. But that's not really gonna work for us in this case because if we do that and we incline this wall, then this wall is going to have you know, pieces of the framing projecting down into the roof plane. And so we're gonna reverse that. So that's our first step and it's not too hard. Just click edit here and we're gonna go ahead and change the corner end conditions here. So instead of being outside corner, we're gonna set it to an inset outside corner. Same on this side and hit update. Okay, and now you can see that the wall terminates like so. But now this wall, of course, is still an inset outside corner. So we need to fix that. So we're just gonna go here. We're gonna edit this wall real quickly. Notice it's set inside outside corner. We want that to be actually an outside corner now. And then just leave this as an end, that's fine. Okay, and then same goes over here. Uh, let's change this one. Notice it's an end condition, which is over here. And then this one should be an outside wall corner. So that gets us where we need to be. Okay, so now we've got our basic walls. Um, I've noticed that I've also turned off a lot of the layers, just so for clarity purposes. I mean, I've got the gutters turned off and everything else here. But I'm going to momentarily turn on the, uh, I'm going to save this file first. I'm going to momentarily turn on the wall uh, or roof sheathing layer so we can cut a little hole for that. So it's just a little more clear what's going on here. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see I've already cut kind of the hole here. And, you know, we could modify that as need be uh, as you get further along in your design. You know, you may change that up some. But just for modeling purposes, we're chopping a little hole in this roof cladding or roof sheathing, sorry, so we can work with it a little easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and, and notice that I'm manually editing uh, this roof assembly, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get right in there. Okay, so now I'm in there. Great. Just want to make sure and I'm going to just go ahead and push pull a nice little uh, opening here. So I'm going to find that spot right there where that intersects that piece of the roof. And then I'm going to find that. Now I'm sure there's more than one way to do this, but it seems to, uh, to work. Complete our rectangle coming back down to here. Okay, and we can see that we've now got our opening. Now we just need to push pull that guy and remove that little piece. This is always fun. Yep, and we got it. Okay, now we can jump out of that. <clears throat> and now you can see you've got your opening. However, if you notice, um, you know, we've still got these walls, right? and they're projecting through the roof, right through the attic truss. And we actually want it to sit on top of this uh, roof plane, on top of this OSB actually. And that's partly why I did with the sheathing because I want to show you we need to account for the fact that we've got uh, this wall sitting not only on the, the actual trusses, but also on top of the OSB. Okay, so I'm going to actually change the um, transparency of the OSB just to make it a little easier to work with as well. So we're gonna have to open this up a little bit, open that, click edit, and we're just gonna uh, make this quite transparent so we can see through it, we can work with it a little bit. And so now what I wanna do is I want to get, when I when I do the, uh, or the uh, incline, it's going to incline from the bottom of this wall, and I'll show you that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and edit this um, wall assembly right now. And to get the inclined wall now, all you do is you come down here to the advanced options. At the very bottom, you're going to see inclined wall. So we're going to turn that on. And notice it's going to give you a pitch and a inclined direction and a vertical offset. So I'm going to set this to 1012 because I know it's a 1012 roof. Hit update on that. Okay. And the vertical offset by default, of course, is zero. So that means it is starting the offset, or not the offset, the incline right at the bottom of the wall. But notice that's not where we want it. We actually want it so it 
starts right there, or actually right here, sorry. So we'll just go ahead and close that out for now. Let's get that dimension. So to find that dimension, we just need to get a little dim uh, dimension tool here and pull a dimension from where the wall actually starts at the bottom up to where it uh, intersects right at this point. So notice that that, and you know, I'm pulling this to the six decimal place, but you don't have to. So I'm going to do that. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so we've got our dimension now. So if we go ahead and jump back into this wall, let's edit that wall assembly again. And now I'm going to change that vertical offset from 0 to 5, 3, 7, 5, 4, 7, 6. Sorry, 4, 7, 6. And hit update. Now you're going to notice where it's... Okay, so now notice that it perfectly sets that incline and it's resting on top of that OSB. Okay, I'm going to jump out the edit tool. So it's sitting right on top of this, um, this OSB where we want it. So there's your incline wall. So that, that really, I guess, is the primary purpose of the incline wall feature that I added. Um, it allows you to do this sort of thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the other wall. So the other wall, <clears throat> of course, is the wall starts back here and it ends here. So actually the incline is reversed from the, this other wall here. And you'll notice that if we edit the wall, edit wall assembly, let's go ahead and incline it. So go down here, turn that on. All the options come up, go to 10, 12. Uh, we can put the offset in. Let's see, what was it? 5.375474476. Okay. Okay, and now you notice, well, wait a second. It's, uh, yeah, that's not right. But that's because we've inclined it from the left. So if we go right, it'll flip that around. And now you notice that we've got an inclined wall going the right direction. So basically, you've just got to flip it one way or the other, depending on which way you're going. But as you know, a wall always has a start and an end. Um, and so that's to, something to be aware of. So let's go ahead and close that out. Okay, so we've created our inclined walls. Um, just for uh, illustrative purposes, let's go ahead and throw a window in here. Uh, I think on this w last window I did, let's make sure we match to it. Um, <clears throat> let's see, the header height is really all i got to worry about. It's 70 inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw that in there. So let's change our header height here to 70, update, and then I just centered it essentially onto the, uh, I think it was centered onto the, yeah, onto the dormer, of course. Right, and there you have it. There's your next dormer. So we've gone ahead and used the wall tool to create the inclined and regular dormer face, uh, the front face dormer walls. And that kind of helps you illustrate, you know, why the, exactly you need uh, the inclined wall feature. So it gives you that ability to do that. And I'm not going to go ahead and draw the, all the rest of the dormers. I was mainly just here to try to do this video to show you, you know, what that inclined wall feature is like. So anyways, um, yeah, I think it's a helpful little ability to do this. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the wall sheathing just so we can see that. And let's go ahead and turn that back up a little bit yeah okay so we can probably delete these dimensions now we don't need them but there you go there you have it um we've got the start of a dormer set here on this uh, uh detached garage and i think uh if you have any questions give me a holler but um i i am still working of course on the roof plugin and uh the the, the dormer tool but part of the reason why I've held off on doing more with it is trying to determine, well, how do I want it to interact with the wall tools? So I think eventually what I'm going to have it do is it will try to take care of all these steps for you, but it will draw the walls themselves with uh, the wall tool and take care of the inclined walls and then add the roof on top of the dormer as well. So anyways, it's a rather complicated procedure and it's going to take a little bit more uh, coding and some fairly you know significant algorithms to do that so 
All right. Well, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, give me a holler. And I'm always here uh, willing to, uh, uh, you know, take into consideration any sort of um, feature requests and that sort of thing. Thank you.